Hey guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and we finally have another Wee Wednesday video. It's, Wee Wednesday has gone away for, I don't know, four or five weeks. We're back. We've got a knife by Fura. This is a modified Tanto frame lock, and uh, I'm calling it a Wee knife. It's like a two finger plus a tiny bit of a maybe grip. If your hands are men's mediums, you're going to get a three finger grip on this thing, possibly. Uh, small ladies will probably get, most ladies will probably get a three finger grip off this thing. I'm still calling it a wee knife. It's uh, titanium TC4 titanium uh, handles, and uh, they're saying it's a S35VN stainless steel. And uh, it's a flipper. Frame lock, as I said earlier, you can get it in this uh, what they call mist blue. Or you can just get it in a typical gray steel, a titanium kind of, yeah, it's a cloudy gray color. Those are your options. So let's take a good close look at this knife today. When you buy this knife, it's going to come in one of these felt pouches. It's a uh, decent sized pouch with a nice little snap here to uh, hold it in. Just another way for them to ship the knives. And uh, it's a nice secure way to ship a knife. It's not gonna get scratched up and dinged up or anything. Now, I've added this little split ring on the back. Uh, you could add a lanyard if you wanted to. Um, you can see here's the pivot screw and there's the other open pillar screw back here. And what they have is, if I can get the light just right so you can see it e easily. So there's the pivot screw, well not the pivot screw, the uh, screw on the back, the body screw. And then they got a pin back here, and that pin is what you can use to tie a lanyard on. But you also have the option of putting a little split ring on there. I like to carry my keychain knives sometimes. Here's a keychain knife, one of the uh, uh, rake knives that I carry. It's just a nice little keychain. It's roughly the same length this guy's just slightly a bit longer. And what I use is I use these uh, carabiners, these little guys. Um, I've also sometimes used these uh, that have a swivel on them and a little lever. That's sometimes for some bigger things. And uh, very simply, I just hook it on there and it's on my keychain. And then when I want to use the knife, I just unclick it use the knife without having the keys all over my hands at the same time. It's a very convenient system that way and ready to use and uh, I just find it much more convenient than having the knife semi-permanently attached to the keychain. So really good system if you ask me just to carry your stuff around that way. So that's one of the options for how to carry it. Of course, you could tie on a traditional lanyard, uh, but there's no pocket clip. So with no pocket clip, your other option is to just drop it in your pocket. It'll fit into your coin pouch if you've got that fifth pouch on your pocket. Uh, let's see my pants that I've got here. Uh, what I'm talking about is if you've got one of these pockets, you can just drop it in there and your main pocket is uh, available for all your other stuff. And you can just, you know, then pull it out whenever you need it. So you've got that option. Now let's take a look at it in some more detail. Let's get rid of that rake because he's not part of the story. We've got a nice shaped knife here. I like what they've done on the, uh, just the general uh, touches that they've put on it. So you got these five little uh, spots milled out here, four of them up here on the back. And it's four on the back here on this side, and then the frame lock side is just slightly different. Let's zoom in just a little bit more. So we've got this beautiful knife here. I think it looks very, very good. You've got, um, well, I've, got I've got to do something about that focusing. I've just made another adjustment to it to hopefully uh, help with the focusing because I've been having it you know, always automatically refocusing and refocusing. 
talking about the body of the knife, you've got a couple of big holes through here, as you can obviously see my fingers through there. That helps to make it lighter, although titanium is not that heavy to start with. Uh, you've got a couple of little uh, areas milled out just a little bit right there. So when your thumb sits there, it kind of nestles in nicely. That's a good thing. Uh, just little touches just to give it uh, some character. A little bit of a relief cut here for the uh, lock arm, so it's got that spring to it, and uh, and it's closed. Everything is you know safely tucked in. There's no sharp edges anywhere near. Uh, you've got a little bit of a hole in the flipper tab there. That has to be just aesthetic because there's no other purpose for it. A little bit of jimping on the front, so they're talking basically flipper method. And you can use that flipper method. You can also use the push down method. And it's not quite as easily done because, you know, it might not want to go all the way out unless you get it just right. So I find myself using the light switch method most often and just, you know, get her done that way. So that's basically the body of the knife. Uh, by the way, it's Torx. I think those are T8, if I remember correctly. Uh, it is a free spinning pivot screw. So... I, I really don't like those that awful much, but I do have a simple solution for it. I've got a little vise that I clamp my knives in with. They got rubber uh, pads on them, a plastic rubberish kind of pads to hold the knife. And then I use two screwdrivers and then it works just fine. I've got a whole video about that. So if you uh, are wondering about what I'm talking about, um, look in the description below and I'll try to remember to put a link to that video in there. And if I don't, then just ask me in the comments or email me and ask me about that. Okay, so that's this. Uh, I won't open it up yet and show you the... Yeah, I'll do it. I'm not going to open it up and show you anything because there's nothing to show you. But I'll show you a still picture of the ball bearings that they have for this. It's just a really nice tiny little set of ball bearings that they use, so that's good. And that brings us to the blade. So the blade is a full flat grind, this modified tanto. So we've got a uh, sharp edge there, sharp edge here, and a dull edge right here. That makes this tip right here super strong. Let's zoom into that one now, focus up there. Uh, I've set it to manual focus now, so if I forget to focus sometimes, please forgive me. <laughs> so you see how strong that tip is? It comes down to that edge, and then you've got a really, really strong tip indeed. Uh, I've sharpened it up afterwards. Uh, one of the reasons why I sharpened this knife is I wanted to see if it really was S35VN. Now, I can't say for sure if it's S35VN. I don't have the metallurgical uh, tools to test it or anything. Uh, one of the things I test for in a sort of subjective way, since I'm so familiar with sharpening knives, I sharpen it and see if it feels like when I've sharpened other S35VN. So I know that different hardnesses of steel are going to sharpen different differently. It's going to feel different. It's going to, you know, it's just with a lot of it experience, you just get a good feeling for it. And I couldn't quite get a... a I can't say that it's that much different than S35VN. And uh, it certainly is priced in a range that they could have used S35VN because it's not a very big piece of steel. So it's not like they had to put the price way up to accommodate a huge blade. It's just a little piece of steel. And at this price point, hey, maybe it is S35VN. Uh, it is quite hard. It uh, keeps an edge. I've played with it quite a bit. I've done a lot of different cutting with it. It's a great little utility. I'm calling it an urban EDC. It's a category I've mentioned before. Uh, that's for knives that I think are good for in the city. You're carrying it around. It'll take care of almost all the tasks that you're going to face during the day in the city. Uh, it'll, you know, open packages. It'll take care of, uh, you know, all kinds of little things. Of course, it's not a self-defense knife. Um, although if you want to use a knife for self-defense, this is better than having no knife. That's true. But, uh, you know, it's basically for the little EDC tasks that you will have come up during a given day in an urban setting. Let's see how well it cuts. 
it will certainly cut paper. Here's my notes. No problem at all with that kind of job. I've got this kind of uh, loop, uh, sort of this fabric that I have, this belt, and uh, it's not quite long enough to cut it, so it's going to take two cuts, but cuts through that very easily, no problem at all. I've got some dust left over from that, so that's not a problem. And even if you have some heavier tasks come up, you know, you can take care of doing, you know, some work with some wood. This is a hard wood that I've got here, and you know, as you can see, it works to certainly cut wood, not a problem at all. So it cuts really well. It's a nice small knife. It has a good look to it. Uh, let's give you all the dimensions here. We've got um, a cutting edge of five centimeters. That's two inches. That's sort of measured diagonally from there to there. We've got a blade length of a little bit less because I measure the shortest point from the tip, the shortest point to the body of the handle, straight in there, 4.58 centimeters, 1.8 centimeters. Uh, the blade thickness is three millimeters. That's 0.118 inches. The blade depth is uh, 2.6, no, 2.16 centimeters. That's 0.85 of an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind is uh, just under half a millimeter, 0.46. That equals 0 0.018 inches. And then uh, the handle length is 7.19 centimeters. That's 2.83, so it's not even three inches long. The uh, grip area, that's right behind the uh, guard that the uh, flipper tab creates up to right about here. 5.2 centimeters, that's two inches. The handle thickness is 8.9 millimeters, 0.35 of an inch, so a third of an inch thick. And then the handle depth, it's biggest right here, 2.4 centimeters, 0.95 of an inch, so it's almost an inch, almost three inches, almost a third of an inch. So that's pretty small. Now if you open up the blade and you wanna measure it all the way across, 11.81 centimeters, uh, which is about 4.64, inches so it's not even five inches total when it's open well just over four and a half inches actually it weighs 41 grams 1.45 ounces so it's not even one and a half ounces and uh, that's one of the reasons why i think it makes a half decent keychain knife how much does it cost uh, the full price at GearBest right now, and I'm looking for some coupon codes guys i really have been hunting for them lately uh, my rep um I guess is off on vacations. She hasn't responded me to responded to me in the last little while. So uh, hopefully my rep can get me some coupon codes. But the full price for this is twenty three dollars and eighty four cents U.S. That's about thirty one thirty three Canadian. It's about twenty point four euros and eighteen British pounds and two pennies. So that's the price for it. I think it's a reasonable price for this knife. Uh, I like how it works. I like its convenience, its size. If you can have a small locking knife, you can certainly do worse than this. If a pocket clip is something that you definitely must have, well, then this knife isn't for you. But uh, if you don't really need that, I really do like this option back here. That's a really nice touch. That's one of the, uh, the big pluses for this knife. Another big plus is that the blade is very sturdy. Uh, and it's nice and wide back here to put your thumb if you're going to be doing a little bit of work for a little bit of period of time. Great for opening boxes and stuff. Easy to control. Um, it you know, feels safe and secure in your hands. Uh, uh, but I mean, that's a really subjective kind of statement. Sometimes you get some knife, a knife in your hand, and it just doesn't feel quite right. Uh, to me, this feels very good in hand. You know, kind of pinch grips to do a little work. Um, you know, tip work, all kinds of ways to hold this knife and, you know, no problem at all doing whatever you need to do with this thing. Um, the only things that I don't really like is the sharpener's choil that they sort of have a hint to right here, you know, isn't big enough. They should have made a sharpener's choil go past this plunge. Um, and this pivot, 
a free spinning pivot, man, in this day and age, there's absolutely no need for that. Uh, all you have to do is make a little D-shaped hole and then a D-shape on the end of the post so that one side doesn't spin at all. Uh, so many economical budget knives have that, that there's no need to have these free spinning pivots, but they did it here at with this Fura knife. I've not seen this exact knife anywhere else, so I'm not sure if it's been uh, made uh, for somebody other than Fura. Uh, I know Fura does a lot of rebranding where you've got the same knife, you know, with a whole bunch of different brand names, and Fura is one of them. But this specific knife, I'm not so sure about that. If this is a knife, a, a copy of somebody's that you know, uh, you know, like Sergei Panchenko, he does a lot of little knives. I don't think this is one of his, but if it's somebody else's model or design, I like to give credit to the genuine designer, um, just so that if people do want to look for the, um, you know, the custom, not really custom version, but the high-end version of the same knife, I can direct them to it. I didn't talk about this yet. The uh, lockup is a little bit early. It's really hard to get a camera to focus deep down in there to show you where it locks up, but you can see this lockup arm isn't super deep. Let's focus in here again. So you can see that the lockup, you know, simply by how far this arm is in, that it's a fairly early lockup. Uh, it's not so early that it's been slipping loose. I tested it. I did a little bit of whacking on the spine and it didn't come loose at all. So not super hard whacking, but just a little bit. So I think that the pivot's really good. Um, no blade play side to side, up and down. Really, really good that way. And um, the detent is good enough that, you know, it's easy to open the knife and have it flip all the way open. Uh, no problems. Uh, I think the detent is good enough. Uh, I did carry it on my on my keychain for a couple of days and I never had it open up, but I guess something could theoretically tap on the end here and have it come open while it's on your keychain. So uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to respring this arm here, the frame lock arm, because that's what's holding the detent. And I'm gonna give it more tension in. And the way you do that is you take the knife apart and you just sort of flex this extra. You just flex it more and more. What you do is you uh, mark out exactly how far in it goes when there's no tension on it. And then you just gently bend it in until when you release it, it's further in than it was before. And that creates more tension and that creates a stronger detent. So that's something you can do. Now, every time you're modifying something like that, you are taking a risk that you're going to break this frame lock arm. So this is all, a, that's an idea. You do it at your own risk. Uh, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying that's how it's done, but it is, uh, you know, a risk that you can break the frame lock arm off and, you know, then you're done. The knife is kaput. So thank you so much for watching my little video about this knife. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the best. Um, I didn't record the giveaway that I did <laughs> for the Patreon, so I'm going to put it into another video soon. I do have a video announcement for CBSA issues that I want to record. I just keep forgetting to record it. Uh, I want to give you an update on that, guys. So that's for my Canadian friends. So pay attention to that and get on my case if I don't do it. Email me and tell me you know, you're waiting for that video. You can always email me at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com. And uh, I try to respond to all the comments below, but I don't always get to them, but I always get to my emails. Remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.